Good afternoon. Beautiful Wednesday we've been blessed with as we edge ever closer to Christmas. And uh, we're going to continue tonight kind of using, not really studying the uh, Christmas carols, but kind of using them as a launching pad uh, for our uh, discussion tonight. And uh, we uh, looked at Silent Night. We sang both of these last week and this week. We sang Sunday, Silent Night. Uh, we looked at last Wednesday night. And then tonight, I'm um, going to use O Come, All Ye Faithful. Uh, probably two of my, no, two of my favorite, uh, my two favorite Christmas carols. Um, honestly, um, O Come, All Ye Faithful is probably my favorite Christmas carol. Uh, I just love the line in the chorus that says, Oh, come, let us adore him. And uh, I have, uh, you may have heard me say on other occasions uh, that uh, this is, uh, in my opinion, uh, could be sung year round, uh, not just at Christmas, but uh, year round. And uh, the last couple of weeks, I've uh, given you uh, a little bit of history of the two songs and how they were. Uh, how they came to be, and uh, oh, come all you faithful. Um, I'm not going to bore you with much there. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's a really old song. Um, it has um, been um, been around for about um, uh, pushing a little over 300 years, I guess. It was written um, many, many years ago, um, and um, it has just a real, uh, real rich history to it. Um, and uh, a couple of the verses have changed some over the years, uh, kind of as, as language has changed, um, but it's um, relatively the same. Uh, for some, it is called uh, the Portuguese hymn because that was kind of uh, where it got its real uh, beginning and was sang in the in the uh, in the worship there, uh, but no great story about how we almost didn't have it uh, and it was rescued or uh, anything of, of that nature. But just uh, again in my mind, uh, just for that line, "Oh come, let us adore Him," uh, is um, to me uh, makes it. Um, I just love uh, love the song. I love that line, uh, "Oh come." Let us adore him. So tonight we're going to be uh, using again, kind of, O Come All You Faithful as our background, uh, and Matthew chapter 2 uh, as uh, our text. As I said, we sang this uh, Sunday, um, and we're gonna, what we're going to look at in, uh, in this chapter, uh, again, the line is, O Come All You Faithful, um, and we're going to look at uh, three different uh, types of uh, of people or three different um, hearts, I guess you'd say, uh, that uh, that have been exposed to Jesus. There, there were several uh, around him, but only we're going to see only one of them uh, actually came uh, to adore him. Uh, and we still have that in our society today. There are many people, um, and this Christmas season will, uh, I think, um, certainly accent or um, at least uh, make it uh, make it evident to us. Uh, we will see uh, a, a lot of people, for example, with nativity scenes uh, in their yard. Um, a lot of people uh, kind of, I think it's kind of funny sometimes, all the hubbub uh, over people saying Merry Xmas instead of Christmas. Um, and people getting, you know, a lot of people who get really uh, been out of shape about that don't take Christ out of Christmas. Uh, but they don't have anything to do with Christ the rest of the year. Uh, and so there, there's, uh, there's a lot um, who have been exposed to Jesus, uh, but uh, not all of them actually come uh, to adore him. And uh, in Matthew chapter 2, we obviously have the story uh, of uh, the birth of Christ um, as uh, he was born in Bethlehem. Um, and we have uh, Herod the king. Um, we have the religious leaders and we have the wise men, uh, all who uh, come uh, and they're all looking 
uh, for Jesus. Uh, but only uh, the wise men uh, are those who said, uh, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Uh, we've seen his star in the east and we have come to worship him. Uh, and so let's... Um, uh, use again kind of that as our backdrop this morning uh, or this evening excuse me uh, and um, and look at this uh, this passage let's talk about uh, some of uh, the hurdles uh, for these wise men to actually come all this way to actually uh, worship Jesus. Uh, there were a lot of sacrifices that were required. Uh, it wasn't, again, we, we sometimes, I think, take that for granted in our day uh, when we read the Bible and we read about somebody going from point A to point B, um, you know, going from, uh, you know, from Bethlehem to Jerusalem or going, uh, you know, in the, making these trips that for you and I, you know, we can jump in our car and, you know, we'd be in, at the beach, we can be, you know, down, down to beach in a matter of a couple hours. Um, you know, uh, these folks, uh, even a short trip uh, was a lengthy trip, and not just a lengthy trip, trip uh, but a risky trip. I mean, there, there are many times thieves and robbers on these uh, on these paths, and uh, and so it was a quite quite a danger uh, for these men. They they most likely uh, came. Uh, generally, the the accepted belief is that they came from Persia, uh, which means they would have traveled about a thousand miles. Um, and again, that, that's not by plane, train, or automobile. Uh, and so, uh, again, it would have took them um, roughly uh, a year uh, to make a, a journey of a thousand miles. Uh, they probably, to make that thousand mile trip even worse, um, it would appear, um, and, and I use that phrase very loosely because I'm not sure, but it would appear that most likely uh, they traveled at night uh, so they could see the star uh, for, uh, for, um, for guidance. Um, and, and so this was a major um, undertaking to go find uh, the Messiah for them. Um, it, it was a huge um, sacrifice. They had to leave, you know, their home. They had to leave everything. Um, and uh, for, again, you know, it wasn't just a year to get there, but then a year to get home. Uh, and, and so to basically walk away from everything, literally walk away from everything, um, to, to journey to see the Messiah. Um, and yet we live in a time uh, where we can't even be bothered uh, to get up and, and be in church or uh, read our Bibles. But these wise men uh, were willing to travel um, you know, in the vicinity, maybe over uh, a thousand miles over a period of months, um, again, just to, to check Jesus out. Uh, again, and, and, and please see that difference as well they didn't really know who Jesus was. They, they had heard about him. They had read about him. Uh, they saw a star. It wasn't like they were, you know, we, we have people today who profess Christ as Savior, who say they're going to heaven, um, who, who want to go to heaven and be with Jesus, um, who can't even be bothered um, to read their Bible or, you know, or, or go to church. Uh, these men weren't... Uh, servants of Christ. They were, they were, they were seekers. Um, and they, they went, uh, and made this, uh, journey. And so, you know, multiple obstacles in them finding Jesus. But not only was, uh, there those, uh, geographic, uh, issues, there was a, um, uh, not only did they have uh, these sacrifices that they had to make for this journey, uh, but there was a system that had to be replaced. Uh, again, they had to overcome uh, the barrier uh, of race and religion. Uh, again, they were, they were Persians. Persia had its um, own religion. Um, and yet, uh, you know, it would have been easy for them to say, well, our religion's good enough, or our religion's even better than yours. Um, we, you know, we're, you know, we were, uh, born in our religion. We're going to die in our religion. Um, but, um, you know, they, they um, you know, they, they decided that they would, uh, venture out 
and uh, again risk everything uh, to go. Um, you know, and, and there, you know, there, again, we have people in our in our world today um, who who want who won't uh, have uh, who don't want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ but yet we see uh, these men they, they literally lived out um, they, they they risk everything uh, again family uh, life they risk it all uh, to come and adore uh, Jesus Christ um, uh, again um, uh, again accepting Jesus uh, as king, going to find him a baby, a toddler, uh, by the time they uh, arrived, you know, would have been, you know, almost uh, unheard of. Why should we leave our uh, religious system to go follow this little child? Uh, why would we want? Uh, why would we want uh, that? Uh, you know, when the own Jew, when the Jews themselves, um, they're not accepting him, uh, and you know. Um, you know, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna walk away from everything uh, and uh, accept him. Uh, but yet we have a group of men here um, who said to themselves, you know, we're gonna go see him. We're gonna go check him out. And you know, if if it is true, if if it is uh, what what it seems to be, we're gonna we're gonna overcome. We're gonna set aside our own uh, personal background, our family background, our religion, our race. Uh, we're not gonna allow anything uh, to stop us from coming and adoring, worshiping, serving. Jesus Christ. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that's the challenge uh, that we still face in our, in our world today. Um, you know, there, there, you know, there are all kinds of examples of that. Um, uh, we have in some countries, Muslims who, if they were to, uh, to accept Christ would be banished from their family, maybe even killed by their own family. Um, that there are people in America, uh, who may not face the repercussions, uh, that, uh, Muslims in other countries may face. Uh, but, um, if they were to change their life, if they were to give them their heart to Jesus Christ, uh, their own families, um, would, you know, would, um, reject them and, and would ridicule them. Uh, but, uh, these, these wise men were willing to, uh, to set aside everything, uh, so that uh, that nothing, uh, their prejudice, their you know their background, uh, nothing uh, was going to keep them uh, from uh, from coming uh, to Jesus Christ. Um, and then third, we have uh, the the sufficiency. Uh, relinquished. Look in uh, verse two, um, as it says there, that saying, "Where is he that is born of the king? For we have seen his star in the east, and we are come to worship him." Um, they again, when they saw him, they they fell down um, and worshipped him. Imagine again, it, it probably took them a year or so to get there, uh, and so at this point, Jesus is probably um, a little toddler, just kind of wobbling, weebling uh, around the house. It was this little boy again, a year old or so, probably just taking his first step, saying maybe a few words, maybe mama, daddy, um, you know, all, all those kind of things. And yet when these, uh, when these men get there, um, they don't say, you know, well, you know, we're, we're not going to worship him. They fall down and they worship, uh, the, this young child. Um, and so again, uh, despite everything, and, and you know that's you know that, that I could probably expand that list some, uh, you know that uh, that everything the physical barrier the pride the prejudice um, and imagine uh, after traveling a thousand miles to get the king of the to, to, to meet to see uh, the king of the Jews you knock on the door and you know some man comes to the door and you say are you the king of the, are you, are you, you know no. Over there he is, the, the little one in the corner, um, you know, with a pacifier. Uh, that's who you, you know, can you imagine, um, you know, and, and yet they come, uh, came for the sole purpose uh, of worshiping him. And when they find him, uh, they fall down again. The challenge, the lesson for you and I to let nothing uh, stand between us uh, and the worship 
uh, of, uh, of Jesus Christ. And then finally, uh, the other barrier uh, that we see is, uh, is selfishness. Look uh, with me in verse, uh, verse 11. When they, uh, and when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary and, and his mother and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasure, they presented to him gifts, gold, frankincense, uh, and myrrh. Uh, and so when they arrived, um, again, they, they, you know, uh, they opened their treasures. Uh, they gave him uh, what, uh, what they had, gold uh, that was uh, fit for a king, uh, frankincense that was used uh, by the priest, myrrh, a, a sacrifice. Um, and and uh, again, the, the text tells us that they rejoiced uh, with uh, great joy uh, at seeing Jesus. But the other hand, uh, we read uh, the same story tells us that when Herod heard about Jesus, um, he was greatly troubled. Um, and, and so all of us are exposed to Jesus, uh, but do we come to adore him? Do we come to worship him? What price, what sacrifice are we willing to make uh, to actually worship uh, and adore uh, Jesus Christ? Look at their heart, uh, the three hearts that are displayed. You've got a, a, a defiant heart. Look at Herod, uh, if you look in verse 3 uh, of this text. Herod, uh, when he hears about Jesus, the Bible says uh, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. Uh, and so when Herod uh, hears about Jesus, he has a, uh, a, a defiant heart. He sends people out to go and to, uh, to search for Jesus and supposedly when they find him, he wants to go and worship him as well. But we know the truth is um, he wanted to kill him. He actually uh, ended up, I mean, he was a murderer. He killed one of his own wives, two of his sons. Um, and here he is. Um, he's going to send out a decree uh, to kill um, all of uh, all the all the little boys that were born, um, and there are still today uh, many defiant hearts. Um, they they they've heard about Jesus. They um, they they know about Jesus, but like Herod, um, they they um, I, I'm not going to worship him. I'm I'm not going to follow uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, perhaps even more sadly than uh, than the defiant heart. Um, is the disinterested heart. Uh, if you look in uh, verse 4 uh, of the passage, the Bible says, And when he gathered the chief priest, he being Herod, um, and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they sent unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, uh, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor uh, that shall rule my people Israel. Uh, and so Herod, when he hears about it, he's distressed. Um, and so he calls the priest in and he says, what's, tell me the story, what's going on? Um, and, and these priests, these scribes, the, the priest. They, they knew the story. They were scholars. Uh, they were, knew where Jesus was uh, to be born. They had been the ones who had been copying and recopying the manuscripts and passing it down um, to, from one uh, to the other uh, generation. But here they are. They are not willing to make a roughly five-mile trip compared to the wise men uh, who made at least a thousand mile trip, uh, not even willing to make a five mile trip uh, from Jerusalem to Bethlehem to check out this story. Um, matter of fact, you know, I've always kind of questioned five miles to go check it out. Why did they just stay in Bethlehem? <laughs> if, if they already had read the book, they knew they had copied, they had wrote it. Um, they knew that Jesus was going to be born in Bethlehem. You, you would think they would have moved their headquarters to Bethlehem and said, we'll just wait. Uh, but they didn't, they couldn't be bothered uh, by it. They didn't want to, um, they didn't want to check it out. They were just disinterested uh, in, in what was going on. And 
Uh, you know, we have, uh, again, we still have that in, in the world today. Uh, there are people who just just can't be bothered by all that Jesus stuff. Just can't be bothered by all that church stuff. Um, you know, I, you know, you've heard the words. You know about Jesus. You've heard people. You grew up in church. You've heard people saying that Jesus is coming again. and You've heard about heaven and hell and the cross and you, you could you could tell the story better than I can, uh, but you've never made a decision uh, to commit yourself uh, to Jesus Christ, that disinterested um, heart. Uh, but then thankfully, we also have the picture here again of a, uh, of a different heart in verse 11, uh, when again, we read those words that when they came and they saw the child, they fell down and they worshiped him. They opened up their treasures and gave him gifts. We have finally a desperate heart. Uh, the, the heart of these wise men that was desperate. They were seeking. Uh, they wanted to find Jesus. They wanted to come and adore him. Uh, they, they knew something about astrology. They knew about agriculture. Uh, they, 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 were, they were wise men. They, they knew about pretty much everything. They were the scholars uh, of their time. They were the best um, of the best. They were the smartest. And yet here they are now. They are desperate uh, to come and to worship Jesus. Um, and my, my prayer is that we have more of those kind of hearts uh, in our world today. We, we need that kind of heart today in our society, in our culture. We need, we need people who are desperate uh, to worship and to adore uh, Jesus Christ um, and, and desperate uh, to find his will for our lives. Um, and so this evening, as we uh, finish up, my question for us would all would be, uh, what kind of response do, does Jesus um, elicit in us? Uh, is it defiance? Is it disinterest? Um, or, you know, or is it uh, desperation? Um, and, and we're desperate uh, to find Jesus Christ. Oh, come, all you faithful. Uh, oh, come, let us adore him. Um, my, my prayer tonight is uh, that we would take this. And um, again, that song says, oh, come, all you faithful. Uh, oh, come, let us adore him. Um, I, my, my prayer tonight is that um, as believers, as followers of Jesus Christ, um, we uh, would learn, not learn, we, we would have a, a fresh fire ignited in us that the faithful would want to adore Jesus Christ. I understand why somebody who doesn't know Jesus, who's never been saved, who who isn't, uh, who has no relationship with the Father, why they. But I don't understand why those who claim to be Christian, those who say they're going to heaven, spend eternity with God uh, when they die, uh, why it is that for some reason uh, we fail. Uh, to adore him. Uh, and so tonight, let's take this text, take the words of that song, uh, and uh, let, let's uh, allow him to penetrate our hearts. Oh, come, all you faithful. Oh, come, let us adore him. Uh, the faithful, let us adore him. All right, hope you have a good day, good rest of the day, I guess I should say. And um, join us tomorrow morning at seven o'clock as we continue uh, to study the Psalms uh, together, and I believe you'll be blessed by that. And uh, each morning, I say you can watch it any time during the day, but um, start, it comes uh, comes on at uh, seven. But you can go back and listen to the recording uh, during the day. All right, have a good day, and we'll see you later. Bye bye.